What up, people? Welcome to another hot episode of Pop Radio. And uh, my name is Miss Cosmo, as I am every single week. Yes, I am sir. rolling with my homie, Mochi. Mochi for one baby. Please <laughs> save the baby. <laughs> say what? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. We're back with another hot episode of Pop Radio. We got an amazing guest today. We got, yes. of course, the, the dope Stilo Magolide. Yes, we're going to be chatting to him about his life, about his career, about how things have changed, where the game is at right now. Yes, sir. And uh, what I love about Stilo is that he's going to be that guy who's just going to be brutally honest. Like, whenever I have chats with him, even in the club, he's always just like about laying it down for what it is. So I'm hoping we're going to get a little bit of that today, you know? 100%. Hoping for all that honesty, that, uh, but also just uh, that history a little bit. You know, yeah. Stilo's been around for quite some time. Yeah. If you don't know that, you're about to. Yeah. So let's get to it. Here is Stilo Makolite. <laughs> Hey, hey, so we're here with a hot episode of Pop Radio with my man Moochie. And then yeah, we got yeah. our hot guest for today, Stilo Magoli Day. That's right, give him the horns, give him the horns. Rep life, rep life. Look at hip hop, a dog. Hip hop. What's up, Stilo? How you doing, I'm man? Good, how you guys doing? I'm good. It's good chilling, to see chilling, you. Bro. It's good to see you know you're alive. You're keeping yeah, clean. You're keeping yeah. healthy. Pulls yeah. a manzi. I mean, I did it, black. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. So, thank you so much for joining us today on Pop Radio. Um, I think, you know, if anything, you're one of those people who always kind of puts a smile on my face whenever I see you. Like, you're just a, a jovial Aww. character. Aww. Huh? You're telling That's me people don't tell you that. No, I think a lot of people say to me, um, that I'm hectic, maybe a little rude. I don't know. I mean, it's, you think it's, it's a, a hip hop thing. It's, it's not, it's no, not to say that you're not rude. You just, yeah. you know, you're also a jovial, rude person, possibly. I think, I think, I think, I think people just don't get my banter. Ah, okay. Yeah, about different kind of banter. It's like Joburg banter. So a lot of people are not from Joburg, so they don't get it. What's but Joburg banter? I mean, you just gotta be a native to get it. <laughs> But that's the <laughs> that's the Stilo thing though. It's yeah. the Joe banter, but also it's the lingo. Yeah. In Oaks, I think I try and uh, maybe I feel offended because they just don't understand. Yeah, they feel the spend around when you guys start speaking uh, uh, your language. <laughs> yeah. you, when, when, when you natives start speaking. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he says he says you guys because I need to use an import. This guy also he's not from here. Yeah. So you can, <laughs> you're like um like a um a prolific uh, rapper said you can hear it in there. When they're not a local. <laughs> oh, wow. In the way they... You know what I mean? <laughs> that they ain't from here. Yeah, that, ah, you ain't uh, from this part of town. Yeah, well, this one, no. But uh, Steel is definitely from this part of town. From Joburg, Jacek, yeah. Johannesburg. Magdalene. Um But yeah, man, uh, I think you've also just had a very decorated career. You've also been one person who I think uh, people have enjoyed seeing the different facets of you. Mm. And obviously, we're going to dig in a little bit deeper just to, you know, get a a little bit more of who you are um i think at first i think a lot of people who had interacted with you and your brand was um from cream cartel yeah. uh and those days are long gone but some people don't even know what cream cartel is your mother's about 2000 because now you tell them something and then they're like Konje, yeah, what maybe is what is that what, what is, is the cream cartel what came first yeah, yeah, yeah. what is that cream cartel was uh in terms of like reality shows in this country it's the first reality it was the first show. reality show Definitely. you guys were the back or the we, benchmark we started it before no, the other reps, it. before no, no, we started now. it, yeah. first reality yeah. show. That's what I was trying to get out yeah, of right. Get it right. <laughs> yeah, right. Don't, don't, don't gabaz. Yeah, don't hesitate. <laughs> First, what are we guys trying to? Uh, I mean, what what was Cream Cartel as a crew, as a movement at that time? What it are we guys a TV trying to show? Just a TV show. <laughs> How did you guys put no, it together? No, but they were friends. It so random. No, no, we were friends. Yeah. but like we weren't a crew. Sure, that was mm-hmm. like so. We were like so. First and foremost, like. I didn't even want to be on the show. What? I didn't want to do the show. So when I got casted for the show, I used to work at my keep keep, right? So then I was really rude, right? So the, <laughs> the director at the time uh, of the show, he came past the store. He saw me. He was like, yo, I like your character. Come do this casting for the show. I was like, I'm not coming to a casting. That's not what I'm doing. I'm here selling T-shirts. And <laughs> like, going to party. my life is fine. My <laughs> life is very great. Like, <laughs> I'm VIP every party. I'm... For selling t-shirts. <laughs> I'm killing it. Yeah. <laughs> so he was like, no, come do this casting. And I was like, nah, uh, I don't want to do that. But then he said, you know what? Like the movies. Here's my details anyway. 
if you change your mind, Pull pop up. in. Uh, and the day of the casting, my brother came to visit me at the shop. And then I was like, Ish, I think I can have a good excuse for us to leave the shop. I can tell the guys that I know I'm going to this thing and then we can leave the shop and then we can do this thing and then disappear and not come back. So that's what I did. So we go to this casting, right? We go to this <laughs> okay. casting. And when we when I'm being interviewed, my brother's sitting with me. Uh, and it was kind of just like, they were just having a conversation with me, trying to figure out what type of person I am. And the whole time I just kept roasting my brother, you know? And... I thought I was taking a piss at the show. Ganti, that's what they wanted, you know? And then they called me after that, said, yo, uh, we like your interview. We want you for a callback. Then I was like, oh, interesting. Went for the callback. At the day of the callback, at the callback, it was like now people are supposed to link up and have conversations so they can see who's compatible. Yeah. And it was at Balls. Is it Bowls? Oh. In, um, in, in uh, Zulek. Yeah, that Zulek. place has yeah. a dark cloud over it. So they did it on purpose. <clears throat> yeah, so they, <laughs> to, see. They, to see what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, natural chalk culture or chalk effect. I'm on the phone the whole entire time that I'm supposed to be inside with, these, with the rest of the people. My girlfriend's mad at me. Something happened last weekend. So now I'm on the phone with her the entire time. Maybe it was two hours. By the time I get off the phone, I go back inside. They say, ah, now we're done. We don't want you. Where no, you no, no. They were done with the thing. And I was like, so now they're like, ah, we'll come. Then they call me back the next week and say, no, you got the part. I was like, how did I get the part? I didn't <laughs> do anything. Did it. <laughs> I didn't do anything. They say, yeah, the fact that you were the complete asshole in the whole entire time, mm. that we dealt with you, that was the missing element for the show. Hectic. And that's how I got the show. And that's how I ended up on TV. Whoa! I had no what was that initial experience like of being on TV? Then uh, going from a guy who was selling T-shirts, like you're saying, your life is nice. Now you guys have the first South African reality show. What was that actual reality of it? I think it was really, I think from being, from going from popular to celeb or like what is it, fame, whatever, fame, whatever it is. It got it was it was interesting, but also a bit weird in the sense of it that. Now that now there's now it's not just like we know you and we like you now we know you like you and we expect things from you, you know what I mean whether it's time attention money whatever it is, so it was a lot of that which was weird because TV like TV has money but at the same time doesn't have money depending on how you do TV yeah. you know what I mean so at the time Cream Cartel didn't have money because one it's a concept you know and we were selling a concept that was too big for us as a crew for the production company that was doing it because they didn't know how big it could get but they were they were shooting shooting for stars like trying to figure it out and that's how from that then they got they did all the other shows that they did but when they did when we did season two then they then we did a clothing brand because we were the like we were first crew to do the the sports scene deal yeah. before like they did red bat and whatever so we had cream cream cartel gear at the store but then the, then the boss came back to us and said no you guys must just be the faces of this brand ah. but we own the brand oh, okay. i was like <coughs> chief uh not me i'm out <laughs> i'm gonna go chill at home i don't think i want to do this anymore and that was the end of it why because you weren't getting a, a piece of the check yeah if i for me i've always believed in ownership i come from a family where it's like we, we 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 thrive in owning whatever we do you know what i mean whether it's intellectual property physical property whatever it is we'd like try own it so i think that's why my career has been shaped the way it it has been because i think the biggest battle the most most of the time is that i i'm not willing to let somebody own me or any of the work that i do you know yeah so, man uh, i i guess i guess especially going into like a um, a reality show and you're doing so much and you're now you're getting popular but how much reality is there really in reality tv season one was all reality really yeah season one was all because they couldn't control it they didn't know what they were getting into everybody was unique in their own ways and every day was they just so it was just like it was like we're playing a big tv game yeah so they set up like this is where we're going today then we get there and we just fuck it up that's like that's basically <laughs> what was happening like 
Mommy would do her thing, Abe would do his thing, Guy would do his thing. It was just like, you know what I mean? Um, so that's, season one was, was, was all reality. Season two, because now brands are buying into it, now they're trying to like oh, curate. Tame, curate and mm. do this and do that. So that's why. As they always do. You, you know, know they I mean? come in and they, they ruffle and they try to make it corporate when it's not corporate. Exactly. And that's why it never even got to season three. At this time, um, what was your actual plan of what you wanted to do? Because you're hustling out here, selling the t-shirts. Now yeah. you're on TV. Who were you when they found you? Like, what were you, what was your actual plan or dream? Like, this is what I want to push as Stilo. Uh, my plan at the time, I was um, killing time working at the mall. Yeah. <laughs> before I, I love how simple everything <laughs> is. Like, <laughs> I was killing time before when I was working at the mall before I left. Because my plan is that I'm going to work at the mall for a little bit. Save up some money and then move to Japan. And that's it. And I'm going to figure it out in Japan. Whatever, whatever I do in Japan, that's my life. Right. You know what I mean? Because ideally I have this like almost like mythical dream of like how I plan to retire. I want to be like a fisherman on an island somewhere. And I just want to fish for the rest of my days and just chill and like smoke big zoo and just <laughs> chill. Can you fish? I can't. That's why. That's what. That's why it's like I now learn. That's what it is. That's, <laughs> if that's it's what retirement, retirement is. Yeah. It's part of the journey. Yeah, okay. That's what retirement is. Okay, like, okay. Imagine you learned to fish twenty years before. <laughs> now, why do you still want to go fish? Like, <laughs> okay, I hear you. So that was like kind of. That's kind of. That was kind of like the idea and the and the planning around it. So I wasn't thinking about it much, but um, my boss at the time and my my really good homie now in Gosana. Um, and I'm gonna keep keep. He he actually got me to s- do styling. I never wanted to style ever. It was never my plan. I was Why? never interested. I was not interested. But you were selling T-shirts. I was selling T-shirts that I'm gonna keep keep. Like that was what I was selling. I was it wasn't like my t-shirts. Yeah. I no, I get that. I, no, the reason why I'm saying that is because sometimes when you go into retail, there's a certain way that you will kind of gravitate towards something because it means something to you. Mm. So you could easily get into retail and go and, or not even retail. You could either work at Checkers or you could be a waitress or you could be a barman or you could be mm. selling t-shirts at Ama Keep Keep. You yeah. gravitate towards it because there's something about fashion that speaks to you. I just gravitated towards Ama Keep Keep because it was the coolest. You know what I mean? It was the coolest, and also it was a way for me to get like the f- the, the the fly shit that they had at the store at discount or for free. Yeah. <laughs> Were you meeting cool people in the stores back then? I didn't care about meeting people. I wanted to care. <laughs> That's all I wanted. I didn't Wait, how old kid. are you at this time when you had to like, keep keep? I'm like 17, 18. Okay. All right. Okay. You know what I mean? I didn't care about who's coming to the store. I didn't care about no celebrities. Like they that never mattered to me. But also, I would imagine that at that time, most of the people that are uh, Part of them are keep keep uh, swearing generation. Yeah, all those guys are also just starting out at this time, so they're not yeah. really no, superstars the, themselves. No, people are they're superstars. I mean, those, <laughs> I'm talking like prime, like Chili M is hot, scorching, like yeah. voo. and DJ Smooth. Voo. You understand? Like it's hectic, Josie. Voo. It's oh yes, Josie was that the movement. I don't care. I want this. <laughs> 30%, I want, 30%. Yeah, I want for free. I want to get for free. That's all I'm thinking about. You know, so when my boss says, maybe you should try styling, I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. He's like, no, man. We think about he actually got me to think of a life outside of leaving. Cause I was like, my plan was to leave. I didn't care what else happens, but I would just want to leave. He was like, no, man, try this, just try, try styling because. To please help style these guys that we work with because you you dress the best here. You understand these things. Then I did it. Then I was like, ah, oh, another way to get out the shop. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> get, my plan is that work less, get paid more, like and get the free gear. That's the plan. <laughs> that was the plan. And get the, the fuck only to Japan. Thing. <laughs> the focus. What was what was with Japan at the time? Japan is, for me, Jap- Japan's always been the, it's the mecca for me, for everything, you know what I mean? All things cool. Um, I think it's still, it's still the mecca for a lot of things. Yeah, because I love Japan too. Yeah. yeah, it's a mecca for, for, it's a mecca for a lot of things for me. Like, just like, I don't know, ever since I was a kid, I think it's probably like, I believe that as humans, you, there's a lot of things that get planted in your subconscious mind and you live them throughout your growth, you know? And I think there was a book that was really pivotal in my upbringing like in primary 
about this kid who could draw things in Japan. He was a Japanese kid. He could draw things that don't come to life, you know? And then I think that kind of like cemented in my mind that these hills in Japan are magical, you know? And I kind of just created this world where Japan is everything for me and kind of like aligned with so much of the things that I do, you know? And um, it just became one of those things. Did you ever make it to Japan? Do you know how awkward it is, right? Let me tell you this. <laughs> <laughs> Orcs, this is all. So I had a, so my best friend, Anthea, right? She bought me a birthday, a birthday present to Japan. All expenses paid. Whoa. Like, like the works. I'm t- you know when they say the burger with the works? Yeah. It was the works. Like, we're going to all your say favorite what? spots. Like, it's going to be lit. 2020. Oh. Uh-huh. Oh, 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 my God. I actually had the exact same experience. I canceled the trip to Japan as the world lockdown happened. I was leaving April of yeah. that year. I was leaving April. Because <clears throat> I was trying yeah. to be, be there for that spring yeah, thing. Yeah, for the over, cherry blossoms. For the cherry blossoms. I was yeah. like, that's how I'm going to plan my trip. Yeah. Cancel. Yeah. So, so now, what's Anthea saying now? So, uh, yeah, like we outside now. <laughs> yeah. Like what's, what's the heps? Now we're gonna we're gonna figure it out. Does it carry over to twenty twenty two? Surely it carries we, over. We held on. No, we held on till like the end of of June. Uh, I mean of uh, of uh, of twenty twenty. Like just because you know when you hold on, you gotta keep of course topping it up and what what. And we're like, yo, do we rather top it up or just cancel it for now and then we'll figure it out? And we're like, yeah, we'll figure it out. So it's, now that we're outside, we definitely gotta. Do you know that mixtape? My dad is in Japan. Really? Yeah, that's hectic. I, okay, okay. But I mean, that's obviously um, the, 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 the next segue to kind of get into the music because now for you, um, as you can see, like with your career, you're saying everything kind of just happens. Yeah. Is there anything that's kind of like decided to say, okay, this is my next step? Because for you to get into music, I don't think was something that everybody had kind of seen because if we had known you as Chocolate from Cream Cartel, we just thought you're the fashion guy who's on his phone, you're doing that thing. And now for you to get into the music side of things, was that also something that you were like, okay, this is my destiny or is there a story to it? Uh, music, I've been, I feel like I've been running away from music for as long as I can remember. Um, like my first, first ever introduction to music, um, like music making or being a part of any musical, like, thing was like um as early as like maybe i think i was like 12 12 13 and then like friends of mine were like yo let's let's start a crew you know and at the time the popular sound in the space that we were at was um garage and uh there was a crew called so solid crew and heartless crew and they were like everything and everybody just wanted to be like those guys right and then they said, yo, let's do this thing. And I was like, nah. Joe Berg's state of mind, where it's like, we say no 10 times before you say yes, because <laughs> you don't want to be a loser. That's like, you want to get so yourself difficult. into some other <laughs> shit. Like, yeah, I was like, yeah. You do it first. Yeah, you do it. It's like, I swag. I. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you're not even, th- not that you don't, you want to do it, but you're like, I swag. But as it keeps coming back, you're like, actually, maybe it is nice. Then you're there. Then you're there. Then you're there. Then you're there. Then you're there at Mkhodu Mondays. Drinking Mkhodu and drinking Mkhodu and champagne. Ah, you know, no man, you know, my favorite DJ, Cosmo, is playing. <laughs> so, I, just I had kept to for her. Yeah, I kept to support her. I kept to support her. Yeah, but you know, her, I'm going to have this Mkhodu while I'm at it, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think that was like, I kept avoiding it for a long time. But one thing that I really enjoyed, um, the battle culture was really, 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 like, fun to watch. You know what I mean? Mm. Never really battled. Um, But my life has always been submerged in hip-hop and different elements. Like, everything I did had to be, an like, an element of hip-hop, you know? Like, I think I've almost covered all bases besides... Actually, I've even DJed. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, When? I I I used to throw my own parties. So we used to do... We used to... When... So when we did, so Ricky and I used to throw these parties called Cotton Club. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was myself, Ricky, and Duop. And we'd play like drum and bass, hip hop, dubstep. We do it on, at the Alexandria Theater Underground. Um, that's where like the beginning of Cotton Club records started. Yeah. And so then we were throwing our own, because we had to throw our own parties because we weren't getting booked. 
at the party. You know what I mean? Like, they weren't the kind of shows that we wanted to go to. Like, we'll get shows, but it's like, it's not, it's not curated the way we want it to be, you know? So that's how that Brahm energy started developing because we were throwing our own parties. Like, we had Smee throwing his parties, like Groovehime, and then we'd have Cotton Club. And then every, every, every single song that, that I was dropping would have to throw a party, like Kitchener's or Great Dane or something. Oh. It was like, that was the energy, you know? So I'd have to DJ at my own party. I'm DJing, I'm performing. I'm also <laughs> yeah, you do too pro- much. Yeah, I made promote the merch. <laughs> You're the old stylist to <laughs> everything. <laughs> I made the match, I'm there, I'm everything. So I'm, I'm the driver also. <laughs> now, while all this is coming together now, your meeting with Boy Ricky, what do our boys and yeah. bucks, I'm guessing these are the foundations of yeah. it. At what point do you guys realize that you actually have actual influence uh whether it's just in Joburg and it's growing at what point do you look around and you're like ah guys i think we've got something good going on here and i think it's we have to take it even more serious i think you know the thing was with with the crew it was like when we because when we started when we when we when we got when we got our first like big 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 check um we did a coca-cola ad they were getting like different crews now and Boys and Bucks was, because you must understand, Boys and Bucks, right? Ricky and I weren't originally in Boys and Bucks. Mm. We were, were the homies. We were homies with the homies. And, but Smee and them had Boys and Bucks. They knew who are the Boys and Bucks members. I don't even know. You guys didn't sign the entry form. <laughs> we you weren't there. You weren't allowed. We went there in the first meeting. Yeah. <laughs> when they said, yo, this is what's happening. But then because we were homies and we were always together and we, we had developed this thing, like, from when it started as members only to, to the point that it becomes Boys and Bucks, um, talking gallery days. Um, then after we do this Coca-Cola ad, which is like, was a wild check, you know? I can't start seeing that, hey, guys, we can make coins here. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should move like D. Yeah. These must be the core crew. <laughs> if you say these bros, whose account yeah. number is we can move. Move. Oh, now you're inside. Now that there's now that yeah. there's a check. Now we have an account number. <laughs> soft as boys and bucks, and this can move like this. Yeah, that's when we move and say, I know this is boys and bucks now. But it wasn't like a, oh yeah, no, 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 no. Okay, let's build and push. No, 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 no. Like so it was, was everything was just always organic. You guys yeah. were just pu- moving how you wanted to move. Yeah. I think what was dope also about Boys and Bucks that um, a lot of people also appreciate is that you guys all had your different personalities and elements that was um, brought into Boys and Bucks because yeah. I think at some point everybody was just like, but what do they do? Like, yeah. are they just friends? Are they making music? Who's making the music? Is one just a stylist? Is the other guy the DJ? Yeah. What's actually happening? And I think that formation also and the questions that were coming up because of it, we were like, okay, this is actually just like a group of dope guys who are in Brum, just hanging out and, you know, doing the thing. But now it obviously progresses to a point where, okay, you've got now your first check. And now you have to have like a solidified thing to say, this is what we do. Yeah. Who then decided, to, okay, now we're going to make music because this is the direction that we all need to kind of then fit into. Because it also felt like there was a point where you all had to have a single or something that you all had to push together. Um, we were, like, we were already making, everybody was already making music. Separately. Separately. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, when we decided to do Boys and Bucks, I had just launched myself as Stilo Makolite. Like I just broken up with my band because I was in a band before Stilo. So when I when I was when I was when I when I got out of Cream Cartel, um, and sort of like decided that I'm gonna make music, I think who did I reach out to? Hmm. I don't want to be wrong about this one. I reached out to uh, Hip Hop Scholar because I was spending a lot of time with Hip Hop Scholar from the store. Like he was always a Seattle coffee shop. We'd always chop it up about hip hop or whatever. Cause I'm very knowledgeable. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and, and he's hip hop scholar. Yeah. You get where I'm going with this. Right. Sure. So, um, I make the song. Right. And I'm like, yo, who can I go to besides my brew that I spend a lot of time with? <laughs> yeah. Say my brew, here's the song. What do you think? Can this thing work? Ah, my brew said, he said, I love you, but... Mm-mm. Rejected. Yeah, he shut it down. He was like, nah, that's not a thing. I was like, I could. I wasn't hurt, you know, because it's your opinion. But then I also... I'm a person that comes from a, 
a long line of not caring about other people's opinions because I realized that, oh, we work in a space or in, we live in a world where everybody hates you till they have no choice but to love you. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, you don't, nobody wants to be the odd one out. Yeah. Everybody's like, and most people are sheep. You know what I mean? That's why, like, even the conversation of being a goat is like a weird thing to kind of suggest for yourself, you know? So it's a, everybody prefers to be, I, let me just be in line and then I can either get a section or be within. So when I, when I, when I do that and he says, nah, um, Debza, funny enough, a month or two before that, Debza from Kuala Debza came to the store and said, no, man, you should rap, dog. And I was, he didn't know I was rapping. Out of the blue, he was like, you should be the guy rapping. Yeah. I was like, nah, he's like, trust me, you're the guy, like, you got it. Like, just from the look, I can sell a rap song of yours. Yeah. I was like, okay. You know what I mean? There's something here, you know? So when I start, when I start making these songs, and then I go back to my homies who are rapping, you know? And they I, rapping, rapping. Like, <laughs> Smee is rocking. Like, he's yeah. rapping, rapping. Like, he's doing... Because he, he, was, he was the first guy, besides Bobezi, he was the first guy to kind of really break through, like, the, the first tier of, like, getting, getting shows and doing whatever. Uh, they're like, yeah. But we're doing... But now we're throwing our own parties. You can't, you can't keep me out of rocking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to jump on I'm stage. I'm going to do my thing. It's our party. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's our parties because, like, how we, how, we, how we got this thing on lock is that we've got the venues, our friends are the DJs, we've got the equipment, everything is there. There's nothing lacking for us to showcase. So we can always showcase because a friend of ours has a shop. Yeah. He has a space. So everything is always happening. So we put all these things together. But now, when I keep coming with the records, it's always like, Cats feel like some cats feel like I'm more of a rapper than you are, cause oh. of that cream cartel thing, cause of yeah. the styling thing. So it's like you're dealing with you. So your hate for for whatever reason is is clouding your judgment for this thing that I'm presenting to you. Mm. You know what I mean? So that was like a bit of the ah uh, the slowing down or whatever. But then Ricky's like, nah, let's go. So me and Ricky do the song called Pills and Vodka. <laughs> <laughs> pills and vodka changes everything because pills and vodka is the song that prov is the most thought provoking song in the sets that we're doing because now we're performing at art galleries like Ken Zero is curating this art gallery thing now we're there I'll be popping pills and drinking vodka <laughs> 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 and it's like I, we don't <laughs> we don't know we don't know about, sure about these ones, but these guys are coming with the energy and they're cool so it's like we have to kind of accept it it might not work to the world but <laughs> it's working here so from there it's like they start realizing that yo we need to get these guys more inclusive in this movement that we're doing and did you ever kinda, feel like you guys were vibrating on the same level the entire time because people's careers are moving in different directions yeah. and at different paces like you're yeah, saying yeah. Um, when you're saying like Malum is now pushing and he's breaking through the ceiling yeah and of course as boys you're trying to support and that's all you're, you're, yeah, you guys yeah. are moving forward you're like yeah. Yeah, this guy is hot and we're going to move in this direction and this guy was there ever a time where it was causing friction or you're like guys also when I'm doing my thing I want the same kind of energy to move because you can't control the outside energy but yeah. you guys can control the energy other, that you give yeah. each other yeah always like um also, I think, you know, as, as, as people, we're different. But I've always, I'm like, I'm a great team player. You know what I mean? Like, and the funniest thing is that I'm a great team player, but growing up, I never played in that many teams. Like, on a sports level, it's like, I've always played street sports. So, it's always, it's, it was weird when I was like, in a, Cream Cartel helped set me up for, for, for Boys and Bucks. For teamwork. For teamwork, in the so. sense of it that, like, all the things that all the things that went wrong in Cream Cartel, I knew not to do in Boys and Bucks. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Because Cream Cartel had egos, mm -hmm. like temperamentals. The it was it was flamboyant. It was because now it's because it's different. Like TV fame and like music fame is different. Because yeah. TV fame, you automatically go from zero to getting put in like very like elite spaces, but you have no money. 
but yeah. you are there rubbing <laughs> shoulders with the top whatever because you're all on TV. But then, but TV. I always, I always like kind of break this down that um, TV fame is different because it, there's a visual aspect to it. People yeah. can see you, so they recognize you. They know yeah. your face. With music, it's just, oh, I know that song. Who is that? Yeah. So you can put out like the hottest song and people still don't love what you look like. And TV is character-based. Yeah. Um, exactly. yeah. So people get drawn to characters for different reasons. Exactly. Like, I like that guy because he talks a lot. Exactly. I like her because she looks hot. I like him because... He fights all the time, like, and then that becomes who you must be. Yeah, that's outside what people of want you to be the whole time, you know. So when we, when we, when we, when we, when we in the space where we're trying to figure out like who's who, you must understand like Smee's got like he's just about to do Gusheshe, mm. right? Oh, dope. Okay. He's just about to do Gusheshe. I'm famous. <laughs> Check me out, bro. I'm out here. <laughs> I'm famous, like yeah. I'm famous, like. I, Chalk is a thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? But now my brew is a hot rapper, yeah. right? We're going to the clubs and we're rocking. But now, also, apart from, like, the fame side that I have, the the Keep Keep lineage set me up with Groove. So I have all the relationships with all the club brews. So we're moving soft. Mm. We're moving soft. But now my brew is feeling the pressure of, like, Ish, these brews are not driving me. You understand what I'm okay. saying? These people are not driving it becomes me. They an ego thing. Yeah. So, so when he moves and becomes that guy, now he thinks, now he moves with like, nah, Bruce got to move behind me. And it's like, it doesn't work like that. It's like, cats always had a complex of trying to sun you. And it's like, you right. can't sun me. You know what I mean? Like, my bro. I, I'm a fatherless kid. You yeah. can't sun me. <laughs> In general, nobody can sun me. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I'm 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 from the street. You can't sign me. It just doesn't work like that. I have to give you the nod mm -hmm. as an OG or as an elder, but you're not gonna sign me just because you've decided to. So music has a terrible trade of cats always trying to sign each other. Mm -hmm. Like if somebody has a hot song, they want to sign everybody else that doesn't. Yeah. If somebody's booming, it's always like weird. That's why I never got like. That's why I don't get along with a lot of people yeah. in this game because it's like people think a hot song is forever. I'm like, that's what it is. It's a hot song. It's not forever. Like, they can treat you like royalty in the club this week, and next week it's done. Because it's yeah. a new hot song. Because there's a new guy. <laughs> new guy. And there's a new guy doing new things, and they're not paying attention. This guy's twerking now. So it's <laughs> How are you going to beat that? How are you going to beat that? <laughs> can you talk? You don't try. You don't try the. the you don't try I'm the hip challenge. Hop. <laughs> I'm hip hop. I definitely didn't do that. But I know. Shout out to my boy Zinger. He did it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> represent. Hey man, there's there's one way. There's, there's there's many ways that you can kind of get attention, and maybe it is with twerking. I don't know. I don't know. It is what it is. But I don't know. Apparently, girls like it. Did you like it? I mean, it depends on how you're twerking. Um. Because if it's moving in the right direction, it's also <laughs> making me think about how you're working it in other ways. You're moving in the right direction. For instance, Ms. remember remember the Ms. guy Cosmo, who posted... What are you talking about yeah, now? What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just trying to get it. Like, what are you, what's going on? Remember the guy who posted his video who's in the red shorts? I knew it. And, all the, and all the ladies were going crazy. I don't remember that guy. Okay, you didn't see it, ne? Nope. You didn't, wa you didn't want saw, to see I it. I saw the, the guy, the guy guy. The original guy. In the black jeans, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah Utos. Yeah. yeah. I don't like them cats. Is like they got the physique, them other physique, the Sun City physique. <laughs> That's Slender Boy. <laughs> She's in number they 10. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> but they hard. It's like, like you ain't got to ask me twice. <laughs> <laughs> they hard. Those boys is hard. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. So, um, obviously, this is where, where, where Boys and Bucks is obviously, everybody's kind of doing their thing. But I guess it, it, it does kind of get to a point where. And it's sad to also sometimes see when the bands don't really last. And maybe it is a point of, does ego kind of play a part in a lot of like so-called breakups of, of, of particular bands? Because in music, it also happens all the time. Yeah. I mean, there's always a one guy who says, okay, I'm going out on my own. See you guys later. Yeah. I guess it was, it was that. Um, but more than anything, it was, just, it, was just, it was just power struggles, man. Mm. That's, what, that's what happened to the crew was just power struggles. And... Um, and people not understanding the positions they need to play uh, within this within within this entity, and also just not being genuine and, and honest with each other and saying, "Yo, man, I, actually, I didn't like what you did there." Yeah. And I mean, maybe if you did it like this, 
it would be better. And also, I don't like how you come in at me. You know what I mean? Like, conversa- conversations that would, like, I think that's one, one thing that, like, I would always say, like, um, was, like, solid about, like, Ricky and I, I was like, I'd, we'd always keep it a ticket. Like, yo, if, if something wasn't how it was, we wanted it to be for each other, we'd chop it up. Like, yeah. yo, that wasn't cool. Yeah, I think I think that's also an attribute that that a lot of people loved about Ricky as well. Yeah, because yeah. like, if he felt some type of way, whether he did it on social media or whether he did it in public or even in private, he'd literally just call you up and be like, "Yo, yeah. let's have a conversation." Like he did that to us a couple of times, even on Popcorn. <laughs> like he'd watch an episode and call all of us and be like, "Okay, guys, now that it's up, these are my thoughts. Whether you take yeah. them or whether you don't take them." But I think it's important from a from a team dynamic because you need to be honest with each other. You need you to be able to feedback. You know, you need to be able to take it on the chin as well because, you know, you know, it is what it is. But now fast forward to, um, obviously, Stilo's now the guy that you are running as, you know. Um, Why particularly did you even change the name from Chalk to Stilo? Because Chalk was too affiliated to the clothes. People didn't want to let go of like... The stylist. The stylist in in, 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 in a sense. I mean, I did, I did, I did do an incredible job. (laughs) <laughs> with all these guys <laughs> all your favorites <laughs> look good finally have an ID on how to dress yes my pleasure <laughs> but I had to, I was like yo um, I don't want to do this anymore uh, not that oh no I want to like chasing the music but it's like literally like the music is really 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 my cut like mm. I really really gets busy you know um, from a music perspective and from a rap perspective, I really get busy, but it's a choice for me. It's not like I'm not a competitive dude, so I'm not chasing any of the dragons that anybody else is. You know? So that's why the name was important to do that. But the name also is a double entendre in the sense of it that it's still, it's still the fashion guy, but now meets the rapper. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Ostilo means style in Portuguese and Macolite means Macolite. I mean, I'm from Joburg, so that's basically what it was. It was like, it's still me, you know what I mean? But it was just like a different packaging. I rate with you guys, and when you guys came in, definitely one of the biggest movements that you guys were creating was that style movement. You're able to be these guys who are now, okay, all these guys are making music, and they're about the music life, but they never let go of how they look. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you guys, it was, uh, it went hand in hand. Look, these guys are gonna pull up. They're gonna rock the party. But when they pull up, they're gonna pull up correct. Yeah. I don't think I was the flyest though. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> okay. And I say now with style is that I feel like a lot of people owe you guys. Maybe well, not owe you whatever. No, a lot of people owe me. Yeah. Let's be specific. <laughs> All right. Don't a lot of people twisted. owe you guys. No, 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 no. You not you guys. You owe me. <laughs> What, you what, what do they owe you, Steve? No, no, don't. When you say you guys, you're making it seem like Bo- I'm I was in, like as as a crew, we were doing this thi- like we did this consciously to influence. No, 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 no. Oh me, what? I physically helped a lot of guys look better. <laughs> you're all your favorites, no cap. And even in my crew, yeah. even in my crew, like mm. it's not it's not a matter of like I really yo. Oh me! So when you say you guys, that's like what you saw on TV. But right. Okay, oh, I, I guess that was my so, question. Because like, otherwise, unless you seeing other boys and box members here, <laughs> last time I checked, I was being <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And I think Steelers got some unpaid invoices or what? Yeah, I mean, air air them out. Watch nah, your nigga down. Nah, I'm just nah, playing. You know I mean? ain't, gotta, ain't gotta do that. You know what I mean? I'm. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm in a different place in my life. Yeah, days. man. But you know, getting into the music and 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 what boys and bugs kind of represented. Obviously, there's them swank on one side, but then there's the music, and everybody kind of has the the direction in which way they want to take their music, and. It, it, it also kind of entrenched in our minds that the type of music you guys were making was also very like high energy. You guys are trying to create a new lo- uh, language as well. Yeah. Um, but it didn't feel as though you guys were going to try and do like soft spoken type of stuff or just like, you know, uh, more emotional. It's all about groove and nice time and take it to the top. Let's go. When you're getting into your music now, you've also kind of now transitioned yourself from being um, somebody who was identified in Boys and Bucks to now being Stilo, who is a rapper, but you can also then touch a different side of yourself. Has that always been there, or why did you feel like you needed to also kind of then tap into that from a musical perspective? Uh, it's always been there, like, because um, when I started, like, when I started, like, 
making music professionally and like um earning from music i was doing like i was i wasn't firstly even communicating to like my people you know cuz i was doing like dubstep i was in a i was in a band called number one fuck shit and how did you come up with <laughs> these number names? one fuck shit <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah number one fuck how shit how many were you in the crew it was three of us it was a dj called rude boy spoiler a drummer called burn um and myself on vocals and basically we just like we were like i just get we we we, we have beats and and then and then burns got the uh, the, the 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 drum the drum kit and we basically freestyle the whole show and we're doing our sets like we're performing like woodstock it was like a real thing we were like like it was just us and like all these edm white boys like it was a thing you know um so for me it was like i came from that but i've always like my one of my like i'm a r&b thug at heart like always like r&b is my core like in terms of what i'm what my interests are uh so for me it was like the soft side was always there you know um but i think most of the time because of how my character is and maybe brand is a lot of people always maybe affiliate me affiliate me with maybe harder sounds or more mr party and da, 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 those types of energies but like there's um that that those the the softer side and the more kind of introspective type guy has always been there you know do you think that um the part of uh the the movement that you guys also have was always to uh always connect with the youth you know you guys are very like that bram culture that we speak about it yeah. was always you guys on the ground it was never you guys sending stuff to the kids and then removing yourself out of it you're part of it yeah. in the culture you actually live it you know what i mean yeah. um ricky always had this thing of putting kids on and yeah. stay with the kids put them on put them yeah. on and i see you also have something similar in terms of like uh, um most re- what do you mean similar? <laughs> I am the guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I was trying to say, I'm comparing you and Ricky to be the same guys. No, that's my brother. Can't yeah. compare it. You know what I mean? It's like I've always been like every most of the kids that you see in these spaces, like that you see, like uh, uh, some of these kids, like I'm talking from YS, DD Monster. All of these kids come from me. Yeah. You know what I mean, from spending from from spending time with me and understanding me, giving them the jewels because my 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 journey from the beginning to where it is is like i come from i grew up in a neighborhood where people used to ask me where kenilworth where? when i say i'm from kenilworth kenilworth where's that no by turfentine they're like yeah <laughs> you know what i mean because in joburg it's either you it's either you you have to be like from the burbs or you are from soweto yeah or you are from timbisa or from alex and it's like nah there's spaces in Joburg that not to say that I'm more like hectic or whatever but that there's other hoods there's other hoods that and that's why I always say I'm from a hood not a township and when I say a hood and not a township is that it used to be a burb and it deteriorated and the people that are there are like people who are either impoverished or trying to figure it out you know what I'm saying there's a lot going on it's a melting pot you know so for me it was always my mission from jump was to always represent those kids represent the kids that are ashamed to say where they from represent the kids who are scared to speak their own their home languages you know what i mean that's what i always represented so when i when when i got into the crew um or when when i linked up with the boys it was like that was my sole mission ricky ricky's from the burbs yeah so me and like us sharing jewels like merged our worlds together do you get what i'm saying smi is from is from the hood he's from he's from the township he's from ponella and that that mindset gave a different perspective mk from from uh, what's this haman skral that's a different perspective like all these different perspectives start, you start creating the superhuman in this one moving entity which is boys and bugs representing so many different like neighborhoods and different like perspectives and mindsets that now becomes like my thing at at some point my thing was like I'm a uptown scotan you know what i mean and there was a time i was rocking rose mordas and whatever because i was trying to show people make people understand that these kids don't do this because they don't get it 
this is their representation of what opulence is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they spend a lot of money to look like this, you know? So it was like merging these worlds. That's what it was always about, you know? So that's why... That's dope, though, because you can also see with the relationship that you have with all of the kids that you're mentioning. Yeah. I mean, um, so much so that even your photographer even took on your name yeah. to um, to yeah. represent how much of uh, your brand that he actually felt like encapsulates him. Yeah. Um, did you have a conversation about that with him then deciding to call himself Young Stilo? Or was it something that you were like, you know what, I'm going to put my stamp on it and you're going to run with it? No, I met him, I met him as Young Stilo already. I, I met him as young Stilo and then decided because I'm also, like, I'm vain, but not that vain. Like, <laughs> I was like, I'm definitely not going to be calling you young Stilo. Yeah. So I called him YS. So that's why I called him YS because I was like. I can't do this. Yeah, yeah, that's a bit hectic. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Because it's like, it's cool. Like the, 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 oh, you guys look alike. That's cool. That's fine. Why did he choose your name? Can, did he ever explain it to you? Um, he said people always told him he looked like me. Oh, okay. You know? And then, um, then when we, like, when, when we linked up, because he was like, um, he, w he used to wait for me outside my building, like, when I was staying in Parktown, and he was like, yo, man, I want to shoot for you. And I was like, I, I just came out of a bad relationship with a shooter. I don't <laughs> think I want a shooter right now, yeah. you know? And then he was like, nah, trust me, like, I want to do this thing. And I was like, when we started hanging out, for me, it was like our relationship was greater, was was more important for me. Was more important for me. Like our relationship was way, was way more important for me than the work. Then when the work developed, like the growth of it was just incredible because it was a it was creating a visual idea of what the Stilo Makolite brand looks like. You know what I mean? Um, from from a from a picture perspective. From um from a uh, from videos because I was like yo I want because my thing is has always been like I'm trying to do everything in house. We started shooting on the road, and uh, he was I think we just developed like uh like what 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 the what the Stilo Macolite well, Stilo Macolite brand uh was to look like you know, and um, it just became a thing. And I was I'm I'm always been I've always been passionate about like um doing everything in-house. So I always told him, like, yo, man, I want to I wanna get you to shoot videos and da-da-da-da. So we developed that. We, like, got on to figuring that out together, like how to edit, how to do that, what do we need, equipment, da-da-da-da, did all of that. And, you know, and luckily for me, he was always willing to learn, you know. Um, like, just like me, very Joburg, Ten, t says no ten times before saying yes, so he's unimpressed half of the time. <laughs> yeah, so you we, can so see it can, in his face. Also, so we can so we can move forward, you yeah. know. So and I think he just you know and it just became so much easier because moving, I was just moving with my twin, you know. So I knew that what, if he's there, then I'm good. Yeah, you know? yeah. But now you guys don't work with each other anymore. Nah, 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 nah. Was it like a sour ending, or was it like a thing where he <laughs> needed to grow when you were like fly? No, it was like it wasn't a sour ending. It wasn't a sour ending. It was like um COVID happened. Oh, okay. COVID happened, a lot of things were happening and also like when COVID was happening, I was just like, yo, I'm I'm gonna stay at my house. I really like forever. Just, I'm just gonna chill in I really <laughs> wanna stay at my house. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I did and yeah. and and the kids were like, Yo man, we partying, we outside and they were partying hard, like yeah. I had to be bailing them out of like situations. Oh no. And that's when Vinny finds his, like, like, finds his booming mojo, you know? And then they just ran, you know? And I was like, yo, I'm always, like, I've always, that's, for me, that's what we do it for. Mm. Like, for me, it's, you got to be in people's lives for people to grow because that's just what it's about. Because nobody was in, nobody, nobody gave me a hand like I could, I can give somebody else a hand now. Yeah. So that's what it's about for me. Is that how you became close to the now late? I know this young and uh, Kanye Hadebe, aka the Voice. Yeah. I know um, I've been seeing the tributes that you've been sending out to him. You and all his people uh, really made uh, what I thought was pretty 
like a really big noise about letting people know who this kid was. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, he, had, he was doing his job on the ground, but since he's passing, I think a lot of people got to know him even more. Talk yeah. to us about his, your relationship with him and why you even felt the need to even put out uh, a tribute song for him. Um, yo, that, Kanye, Kanye, Kanye is a very special human being. Incredible. Like, um, from his voice. <laughs> Let's start there. And he's peacocking height, you know. Um, he was he was my DJ. Um, Wires brought Kanye to me, and um, they were um, they were best friends, right? Um, inseparable, always together. And um, Kanye was, loves music, you know. Always like, always passionate. Because the thing about this game is that a lot of people don't talk about is like. Um, People move around in different spaces, but a lot of people are here for a lot of other reasons besides the music, yeah. you know? And Kanye was one of the few people who really just, like, loved the music. And when he started DJing for me, I realized that because when you can have, imp when, you bring, when you bring input to, to the table, shows that you're coming with a difference. You're not, you're not coming here to just say, oh, what are we doing? Oh, okay, shop, let's move. No, you'd always have input. You'd always like try and whatever we do. So the three of us just became like a family that was just like inseparable and we were always together, you know? So much so like there was a point that uh, YS would be like on the camera and sometimes even helping Kanye DJ. So I was like, ah, you guys actually, <laughs> I was like, we're starting a DJ DJ Jewel, yeah. they're like, uh, they didn't believe it. I say construction boys. <laughs> I'm yeah, telling you, yeah, yeah. I say construction boys, and it was a thing. They were getting bookings as no. construction boys. You know what I mean? It was a thing. Construction boys was gonna be a thing, but YS was like, nah, I actually just really want to shoot. Yeah, and he focused on that. But like, Kanye was yo one of a kind, man. He was a big bro, little bro. Like he was one he of those always guys. dropping gems. Yeah, he was like big bro, little bro. Like he'll he'll be with me, little bro, but then. Sometimes be like, yo, Chuck. <laughs> Relax. Relax. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, man. And, 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 and kind of, you know, it's so great for you to kind of still speak about your people because you can see the love and the energies that you had with, uh, with both uh, Kanya as well as even with Ricky. And I think especially in such a small p uh, space of time, mm. to lose the both of them is obviously very derailing um, yeah. because these are people that were very close to you but also um, influenced your life in a very... Um, a uh, specific way yeah. um with those relationships what are you taking out of the very um early deaths i know sometimes um we can either sit and we can somber about it or we can actually say you know what that guy did this for me and this is what i'm going to carry with me um you know what i what i take from 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 both events is like i life is a scam you know what I mean? Like Maybe it's time to go to Japan. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> life is a scam. Like, Japan should is definitely, like, should be happening ASAP. Um, but more than anything, I think from Kanye was, like, uh, firstly from Kanye was, 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 like, love love everybody. You know what I mean? Just really love everybody. And just be honest. Because the kid was honest. Like, he was always honest. From, like, Ricky, like, one thing that don't, don't, Dare to dream. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, one thing about Ricky is that it was like, yo, dare to dream. And never never give up on your dream. Because for Ricky, remember, at some point, this rap shit ended. Like, before. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It ended. And it was like, and he was devastated. And he left and went overseas and tried to figure it out, figure it out there and came back. But it was like, don't stop dreaming, you know? And... And 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 you know even this even the expression of yo believe in the kids believe in the kids is because nobody believed in us you know yeah. and we had to believe in ourselves in order to believe in them you know and force them to believe in other people not even just kids but just anybody around them if somebody can do something just two minutes of your time won't mm. won't hurt you yeah man. what do you think the current state now of I don't want to say hip hop. I feel like Why don't you want to say hip hop? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I feel like you guys and the culture that you influence is more than just hip hop. I know yeah. you're hip hop. Yeah. We are hip hop. You know what I mean? It's no doubt about hip -hop. it. But people steal from hip hop all the time, and it, it, as if they didn't. Hip hop is the most influential yeah. currency in the world. It's bigger. <laughs> it's bigger than crypto. 
It's <laughs> bigger than what? Crypto. I know, nigga, Rick Ross speaks a lot about crypto. He says, nah, not that thing. It's bigger than, you see? Because he knows hip hop is bigger than crypto. Hip hop is in Japan. <laughs> what are, like right now, what's like some really dope things that you're you're seeing happening in hip hop? Because people complain too much every day. It's, hey, my piano is taking over. This is what's, the, what dope shit is happening in hip hop right now that you're very proud of or feel like people That's are rapping. To, yeah. That's the main thing. Like, my main thing is that cats are really, because, the fact that you're not popular now mm-hmm. as, a, as a as a genre is forcing you to get into your bag to entertain your core fans, right? And your core fans want you to rap because your core fans are like, we hip hop. Like you can't now you can't now you can't scam us with like whatever things you were doing before. Mm-hmm. Now you gotta rap. Like your core fans are listening to you. What are what are you saying to us? What's happening? Is that the pocket that you also kind of dug into when you did your Freestyle Friday? Because I think that was the um, that was the one verse where I think a lot of people were just like, yo, like we know Stilo's dope, but we didn't know he had it like that. No, it's like, the only reason I did it, the only reason I even did Freestyle Friday is like, it's just a nod to like, yo, shout out to Stogie because he's definitely one of the most prolific MCs we've ever had. Protect Stogie by all means. Um... But more than anything, I just wanted to show you Guti Raimum Laso, like I really do this, but I just choose not to. Because that's not my I don't think that's a thing. Like you guys a lot of cats like say they create rappers and can't even perform. Like the shows are boring. <laughs> like nobody yes. knows your bars. Like you are in Africa, in South Africa, where dance music is the biggest currency. Yeah. Like hip hop is Kiss Bot Sabuchi's boy will always be. Like, it's a very niche market. But you never, like, a lot of cats, like, I always used to say, like, Reason is one of the best rappers we've ever had. But the only problem is that Reason can't do hooks. Like, he needs to find somebody who could do the hook. And then he needs to find somebody who can do the <laughs> beat. And Reason will probably have the best rap songs. Yeah. Because he's got the bars. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he doesn't want to do that. He wants to write the hook. <laughs> he probably will, I think Reason is co-producing <laughs> I'm like listen you can't do that that's why like I call him a real nigga because even in piano he's still a real nigga yeah. he's still using the same format yeah. you can't leave it just write your bars do your parts get somebody else to do other things because yeah. you're dope the best dog <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, especially with music, it, it sometimes does kind of blur a few lines because, you know, um, you get guys who want to do everything and they can't do everything. Yeah. But then there's there's also this like stigma around hip hop where um, if you're the boss guy, you must stay being the boss guy. And it's like you you want to do everything, but you're not necessarily capable of doing everything. Yeah. So sometimes it doesn't help to kind of get somebody to lend a hand. Yeah. And that's why I've never understood this whole thing of um, ghostwriters being a thing. Because then it's like, but if someone else can help you write your bar to be a, just a little bit better, why is it a fault for you to get somebody to yeah, help but you? That, 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 yeah, then, it's, then you shouldn't be called a rapper. No, but you see, what I'm saying to I'm, I'm literally alluding back to what you're saying mm-hmm. about reasons the rap guy. He must write his bars up in the Somebody else can write the chorus. Yeah. Why is it an issue for somebody else to write another portion of the song? No, 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 no. The bars, the verse. <laughs> <laughs> the verse is your, is your ID. So you, so you don't mess with people who get, like, even if I write, like, one line of your bar, is that a problem? There wouldn't be a way where you write it. How? If I'm with you in studio and you I help ha- you with a couple of words. But there's no way you're doing that. You're going to be there and I'm doing my verse and you're like, oh, shit, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, so are you saying dope. guys, rappers, oh, now we're leading to, be, to lyricism now. Or well, these guys who can be taken as lyricists, yeah. they write their own stuff. And then other people should be taken as musicians if somebody else is, if also, we're literally collaborating on this also tr- we must, track. Yeah, we must also respect musicians. Sure. The word musicians. As Bruce, we are really musicians. Because eh? <laughs> 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 also, I think we... Is I think we should keep it at artist. Yeah. <laughs> artist. artist. You know what I mean? Where they say artist, where we all collab, we all contributed to your verse. Yes. Mm. You're an artist. You can't be called a musician. I mean, there's people who are playing piano and orchestras there. <laughs> and now you are called them. You and him are the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it can't be. At least us, we can argue. We wrote yeah. our own verses. Yeah. Yeah. We can say, hi, nami nya pala. Nami, yey, nami nya roka. But when, sikpaleno. Sikpaleno. You can't oh, say. Man. I hear you, man. But I think that also kind of speaks to how you've also um, found yourself playing in different genres as well in your music. Is that always been intentional? Because again, with hip hop, there's this box where you, where people are, are I don't know. It's like it's an unsaid rule where you can't kind of dabble in other things or other genres or other spaces because it's like, nah, if you're hip-hop, you're hip-hop, stay where you are. You can't now decide you want to rap on a drum beat or maybe if you want to go and do a piano song or maybe you want to go and do an R&B or a pop song. Why, uh, why do you feel like you are still capable to play in those different genres and, and express yourself that way? Um, I've always, I've always like kind of categorized myself as an urban artist. Because I didn't start from like uh, uh, a boom bap beat. That wasn't my first song. You know what I mean? My first song was drum and bass. So for me, it's like from there I can do whatever I want. But more than anything, my format, my language is always hip hop. You know? Um, but then also, because hip hop is also so clicky, there was, there's a lot of rappers that probably, probably, still believe they're like ah you're not a rapper you're not what you're not this you're not this or that and because you're not doing their thing but it's literally like i can do your thing i choose not to you can't do my thing yeah. you can't you can't go on anything you have to you if that beat doesn't sound like that you don't sound like that you're not as great you know what i'm saying so for me it's always an interesting thing like you can't don't say like, I, I remember I was at a concert once. I think it was, I don't remember who it was, but I think at the Dome, somebody was performing, and I was like, ah, this person's whack. A 12-year-old looked at me and said, can you do better? <laughs> <laughs> so you said it aloud, also you. <laughs> yeah, because uh, obviously, it's the Dome, ah, it's whack. <laughs> this kid looked at me and said, can you do better? I took that as the biggest jewel of my life, that if you can't do better, you can't do any different, don't, tell people that they shouldn't do that. Uh, you know what I mean? If they rapping on all these beats, they maybe you should rec you maybe you should look at them and say this guy is actually re maybe he's actually a better rapper than I thought he was cuz nothing has stopped him from rapping. Mm. Yeah. He kept rapping on all these different genres. He still rapped. I can respect that. <laughs> <laughs> he still rapped. I can respect that. Um <laughs> One more thing I wanted to ask you is that uh, I know you mentioned Japan. Um, there was a time where, or oh, uh, Malum, I know you used to tour a lot in Europe. You used to touch a few places, but I'm yeah. them both fronts. Uh, how are you received in those spaces? Do you have any sp places that we don't know about where Steeler is like, yeah, outside of Mzanti, there's people out here that fucks with me? Yeah, um, I got I got a couple of spots like that are, that are, that have been weird, like to see that like they 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 fucking with my music. Like Russia likes my music. Weirdly enough. Please go and get us the oil because, <laughs> wow, yeah, life like, is getting expensive. It is pretty weird, eh? Um, Portugal, uh, which is interesting. There's like a couple of random spots, but yeah. like um, more than anything, I think like also my focal point is like, especially now with um, with like the type of music I'm making now is like, I really, I really want to speak to like, like the urban kid in like, in African cities. Like, that's kind of like, no, and not even on some, you know, because a lot of cats say, oh, I want to, you know, I want to move out of South Africa and do whatever, whatever. For me, it's like there's a street culture happening in the rest of the continent that we are not a part of. Mm. You know what I mean? Because we in South Africa looking at America, right? Mm. They are in whatever space they are in, and they're looking at different parts of the world. Like, they're not even thinking of America. They consume America how we consume it but they're looking somewhere else. They're not even, some of them are not even looking. They are just doing their street culture thing, like, which is like crazy. Like there's places where bike culture and surfing is huge, but that's hip hop. Those are the hip hop guys. They are surfing, but they are hip hop. That's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, how does that balance? Yeah. You know what I mean? Here, if like, when you're hip hop, you go to the club, you, what else do hip hop people do? Yeah. They drink champagne. <laughs> That's what they do. And I always say a lot of hip hop guys locally and like just opening their minds to the rest of the world. Oaks and exactly. doing shit. Oaks, Oaks and even with the art per se, mm. they're yeah. just doing the same thing every day. That's why 
nothing changes or even what they're saying doesn't change because it's just like you don't know anything else yeah. you're not reading or consuming art from everywhere else around the world so you can't expand your mind but yeah. also a lot of hip-hop guys in south africa don't know hip-hop that also what do you a mean lot by of, that a lot of guys rap but they don't know hip-hop they don't have anything about hip-hop they don't have old school they don't have <laughs> like old school affairs of hip-hop current affairs of hip-hop what could be happening in the future nothing yeah. They know what they know what the DJ played last night. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey. And complain about it on yeah, social ish. media. Yeah, and complain about it, and they know that Ish Taga's in jail. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't know nothing. They don't even know what what a Rico charges. Yeah. They know he's arrested, but what's the what is the thing definition? Yeah. They don't know. Ish. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's it's very interesting that. You, you can be in a place where you can do something. In South Africa, you can do something and know nothing about it. <laughs> it's only, you only get away with it, yeah. yeah I think, yeah, you can rock. I mean, we had, we had that guy doing sign language and he wasn't he doing stuff. <laughs> and none of us said nothing. And yeah. we all just allowed him to get they the told check. told us later. <laughs> Bro, this guy was standing next to Obama. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was standing to the leader of the free world. Yeah. The, the, the president of the world at the time, Obama was the president of, of the, the world. world. <laughs> you understand? Like Biden is the president of the world right now. Yeah. If that guy, you know what I mean? God forbid anything happens to him. Dog, the world is going to be stressed. A lot of things are going to be stressed. That's why like, we had a guy doing sign just like that. <laughs> Hey, he submitted his, his invoice. That's all he cares about. At the end of the day, he got paid. Oh, boy. One thing I've always appreciated about you and your music is also that um, because you play in these different pockets of genres, you're also able to kind of curate your albums to sound a specific way with whatever you're going through at that point in time. Yeah. I think um, we also spoke about this with your album... Um, Oh, man, melanin one. Um, uh, infinite melanin. Infinite melanin, where yeah. it sounded a lot more like R and B soul vibes, yeah. but you also had like a bit of like um, Ascandi vibes, also influences in that as well. Um, why is it? Do you find it um, that you need to kind of theme your albums the way that you do, even with the different genres? Because now you're you're speaking about new music that you're working on, which I assume is going to be a different direction compared to what yeah, that was. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, with the um I think it's very important to kind of like have an ID with each particular project or whatever you're doing uh, because my first project was called Cameron Diaz, right? And it was just like a mix of like everything I like and however I want to do it. And there was no curation. The only curation, was, the only curation there was, it was like how this sounds next to this and what the conversation is. But in terms of like the body and whatever wasn't that, that we weren't curating that much because we were like, we want to just hit them where it hurts, you know? Um, and then we like, when I started doing like with infinite melanin, it's like, I really, I'm really into this R and B thing. You know what I mean? Like if I could sing, that could have been it. You know what I mean? I would have been like really getting it. <laughs> <laughs> like really? <laughs> really getting it. Like, so mean, they're just going to trick it out. Like hey, now we got to say, Hey, Auto, hey, auto two, just turn it up a little. <laughs> turn up the auto. Now when I'm singing live, it's, it's tricky. Hey, don't rage it out, please. You no, know, but I, I need to call my man Zuchi to put me on. <laughs> the, the auto watch watch, because hey, Zuchi's one is crisp. <laughs> Zuchi's one. Because it's live. He hits it live. Mm. You know, when he sings his joints. So um, it's very important to curate. Like, it's very important because you, you also give time stamps okay. of what's happening. Of like where your musical journey is, like from where I started to where I am now, you can you can hear the growth, you can hear the development, yeah. you can hear the attitude, you know. Because I think, and that's why, like, um, even when uh, when when people say, because I'll get a lot of people online say, ah, dog, you can't rap. And I'm like, that's why I make a living off of it. <laughs> Interesting. <man. laughs> so, um, and that's why, like. For me, I always choose to rap when I get featured on songs, which okay. is also rarely. You know what I mean? Rappers don't feature me much. I don't know why. Do you, is it because I'm whack? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it is. What Ma is it? Maybe they need you to, I don't know, be nicer to them and not be the rude Fuck guy? them. <laughs> <laughs> I see. You see? Now you're going to be swearing at them in the studio. Uh, come <laughs> on. <laughs> That's because a lot of them have bigger egos on songs than they do in real life when they stand next to real men. 
Do you know there's there's this one song yeah, that the horns there. Yeah. I'm a little bit late now. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> um, there's this one song that I remember I had like a very big impactful thing to me and my friends, um, and when we heard it, it was literally like our theme song for the rest of the season. Um, it was day off. Oh yeah. With nasty. Yeah. Yo, the yeah. way you came in even in the beginning of that song, just the energy, the attitude. We were like, this is how I feel on my day off. Exactly. So the weird thing, that's that's a very interesting example. Because day off, ne, a lot that's one of the songs that like haunts me. Like it's so crazy. That song Why? haunts me. Because a lot of people like for years it's like I nasty body do you <laughs> And I'm like, but guys, you you're not listening to the song. Yeah. Me on that song, I'm talking about my day off. I'm not like, yes. and I'm talking about my day off on the most simple, straightforward South African layman term. Like, you change your thing, you change your thing. That's my focus. I'm not, no, no metaphors, no what, what, no, you know what I mean? And when you're dealing with, when you're dealing with nasty on a song, unless you came to rap, because he came to rap, yeah. he's always come to rap. He's not there. Whatever concept you had, great. I will touch on your concept. Yeah. But I'm here to rap. <laughs> <laughs> he always, that's the... He, that's the MO. The MO yeah. is like, I'm here to rap. I'm not here to... Whatever ideas you have of the people, I don't care about that. <laughs> I love the people, but I don't care about that agenda. Rap. That's it. So that thing always, like, it, it haunts me because it's like, oh, that's such a dope song and I love that song so much. Matter why do people want to? Why do they always gotta make it like a battle? Like yes. why you gotta always make but it? That's hip hop though. They love we it love is. a good battle. It is hip hop, but yeah. it's like also understand the different players in the game. Yeah. Sure. You know what I'm saying? I'm more fab <laughs> than I am Jada Kiss. Sure, and I'm I think when it comes to songs like that where everyone kills somebody, people always have that argument. You know, people bring up songs like yeah. Renegade and we say Eminem killed Jay Z, yeah. and then people go back like, "But did you listen to what Jay Z was saying on that track, though?" Yeah. This is true. And if he really, Jay Z, he, yeah, he did. Him. You know what I mean? But and it's when, like, when you ask that question, they can't even answer you. And when you ask the question, it seems like you're saying still is whack. Next is doing well. Yeah. Yeah. You can't say okay, both these guys are rapping out here, yeah. but we feel like. Maybe one made it. We can talk about it on a, lyri- on a lyrical part. But sometimes when you hear it, it sounds like they're saying the one guy is dope, the yeah. other guy is whack. That's how they think. You know I, actually, I, mean? I actually loved your first <laughs> bit on that song, if I have to be honest. <laughs> and it's not to say that I didn't like Nasty's verse. It's just maybe it's because I understood the point of the song. And the point of the song was to be... To be like you, you were fooling around. It wasn't yeah. really about it being a serious... Because it's serious songs and then there's like, we're fucking around, let's just do this. If you wanted me to rap on Swanko Fontaine, I was battling. And that's what I did. I delivered. Yeah. I bodied. Like, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> that's why the beat is constructed around my verse. Hey. Stilo. <laughs> All right, so the music, you, the, the, the music you're making now, the album that you're, that, that you're working on now, what is that journey kind of taking you to so that we can look forward to it when it drops? Um, a lot of like... Um, I'm diving deeper and deeper into myself, you know, who I am, uh, my heritage, um, like my family's heritage, like my pop's lineage, like a, 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 lot of, a lot of those things are kicking in, you know, and a lot of my influences, like, um, it's, a, it's a very, like, it's a very, like, important, like, uh, piece of work. I don't even know when I'm going to be, like, done with it, so... In the midst, in the in the in the in the interim of all of that, I'm putting out a lot of like singles, because there's a, there's, there's so much music, like there's so much music, and it's and it's all so interesting, because like South Africa is so weird, like we 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 like things in periods, like I mean, like I look at a song like Stimile, where it's myself, Cabello, and Moti doesn't come like that man yeah you know what i mean it doesn't come like that but like because we we're, we're in this pocket where we like who we like you know i was having uh i was i was talking to maraza earlier on today and 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 we were talking about the the idea of falling falling off somebody was like oh no stilo you fell off i'm like how can i fall off something you didn't put me on <laughs> That's i true. can't it's, yeah. it's very bizarre like just because your attention was faced in the hip-hop direction, so everything that was happening in hip-hop hit you. It was like 
alerts every day, right? So now when day off happened, you were alert and it was the it was that dope spark in that in the, in that in yeah. that thing, then you you like you held on to it. But now that you're facing in a different direction, all these alerts here, yeah, you're not checking for them. Yeah. Unless it's somebody that's gonna do other things to make you pay attention, like some drop a shoe or do <laughs> Oh, I don't know what they do. Keep Get a girlfriend. Keep <laughs> up, dog. Get a girlfriend. Make a baby. Uh, like, make a baby. Eat, do something like, uh. like catch a charge. Yeah, I guess I get, and that understand. I do get in that part where see, I'm still working. I'm still pushing. I'm doing music. I'm getting booked. So when you guys tell me I'm not where you think I where I should be, it's like I'm still doing my thing. I'm so because you're not looking in my peripheral. <laughs> don't now tell me that I haven't yeah. I'm not where and also because you stay like I'm still in my lane doing my shit yeah so I don't know where you guys are looking at where you when you look at me you say I'm not there and then when you come back when they come back because then they'll be like yo but look at this 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 I'm like yo it's great we everything that's happening now in the game is necessary yes. all the artists that are in it necessary like as, as South African hip hop we also need to say yo man if we can make dope hip-hop joints, and have focus on these dope hip-hop joints, it's necessary. Because I believe all he wants to do is rap. Who? But Foka. No, I spoke to him. <coughs> Foka's just like, he's done with hip-hop now. He's a piano <laughs> prur. He said, hip-hop, don't phone me. I'm not going to answer. <laughs> but in his heart of hearts. <laughs> yeah, in his heart of hearts. You're right. Heart of hearts. You're right. In, his, in his heart of hearts, he's and, still a rapper. And you're he, right. comes from, he comes from a place where they take hip-hop really serious. Yeah. Victoria is different. Hey, t- that 25K uh, hip-hop is <laughs> yes. inside. Yeah, that one day, Gibbet is a different. The gangster, Peli Makavit. Uh, yeah. Hectic, man. Yeah, man. Because that Tato Soul guy. Yeah, Tato Soul is also doing his thing. But you know what? Yeah, I think well. I think everybody's playing their role at the times that they need to play their role and they're yeah. doing it. And like you're saying, sometimes things are necessary. Maybe the drop in in uh, in, in hip-hop and piano kind of taking over is also necessary because Very. then it's also going to get hip-hop to kind of re-strategize mm. and then say, okay, how do we get ourselves back on top? Because now I think people got complacent. It also got a bit like... True, but hip-hop also, you must understand, it's an outside sport. <sighs> Oh, it's not South African. No, no, no. It's an outside sport in terms of like we can't you can't hip hop from in the house. <laughs> got a hip hop oh, outside the house. Oh, you got a hip hop on stage. So hip hop is a lifestyle. You know yeah. what I mean? We've always been the leaders, the lifestyles. Like, I mean, I mean, like shout outs to LES, all white, all whites, the yeah. the, the 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 pop bottles, the mm, the cotton the, the, the You know what I mean? Yeah. The lifestyle. You know what I mean? So that's why when we're outside now, and I'm doing like Boys in the Hood, and I'm doing that, it's like literally. They, people are experiencing the lifestyle and seeing the acts and seeing all these new kids coming. They're realizing that, yo, hip-hop has a lifestyle. Mm. Piano has music, no lifestyle. Mm. Like the piano lifestyle, the piano lifestyle is not a lifestyle that everybody can consume. If you're not, a, if you're not in it, it's very hard for you to leave your house and go start being in it. Because... Uh, do the dance moves. <laughs> Twerk, let's see you. <laughs> Twerk, like, you have to be in the zeitgeist. You can't just wake up and, you can't just wake up and go to do that lifestyle because piano guys, that lifestyle is different. Yeah. Like even Pori, when he was studying, he was like, dog, I'm going far. Like I'm in Pretoria, I'm going at random spots, but I have to be there because I think this thing is it. Yeah. Yeah, and it worked for him. I mean, he's he yeah. bit on the horse, and now it's working in his direction. You know I mean, what I he's mean? Got a so, stallion. Hey, and it's doing the things, man. Keep on pushing. But Stilo, we thank you so much for joining us today on Pop Radio. Thank you for having me. This is really um, dope. Talk. We yeah. uh, we are very keen to hear when the album is going to be dropping. Do you have dates for us? I don't have dates. I don't have dates, but I definitely have um, a lot of. I just keep now. I'm on my. I'm on my. I'm on my like. I just drop music all the time. Mm. Like I just dropped this tribute track for 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 Kanye. Yeah. Um, hey man, maybe something something fun is gonna happen next week, and that could inspire me to drop something else. And I just keep dropping music. I think more than anything, the um, the culture of dropping every six months hip hop in hip hop needs to die. Yes. That needs to die. It, we need it, to it, it needs to be music. every week. Release the music. Release the music. Like stop. Your hard drive is gonna crash. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, your hard drive is gonna crash and you're gonna say my hard drive is lost. Nobody cares about that story anymore. Yes. Remember the ah I lost yeah. my laptop. USB. Yeah, yeah, I lost my laptop with my album. I'm stressed. Uh can you help me find my laptop? We don't care about that story anymore. <laughs> Drop the music. 
I mean, and it, and it doesn't help anybody because it's like, okay, but we still don't know what was on there. I mean, Nasty had the same thing where they broke into his house and they stole his laptop with his whole album on it. Mm. He had to go back and re-record and he gave us Strings and Bling. So... You understand? You understand? You know, what's your excuse? <laughs> what's your excuse? Because he said... And he keeps going. The music has to keep coming out. You know? Now he's saying tours and music. Now he's yeah. saying pairing the tour with the music. Now he's going to say, what, what? The formats keep changing. Yeah. If you still stuck this thing... Yo, in six months, I'm gonna. This song is gonna be the one, bro. Nobody cares, bro. Yeah, nobody things are moving. Care. Things are moving. People, yo, your ex girlfriend's having kids. She's married. <laughs> <laughs> Move on. <laughs> Definitely. Move on. <laughs> so, oh goodness! Thank you so much, Stilo. Really enjoyed the conversation. We'll definitely be watching, and we'll be supporting, and we'll be listening to all of the the weekly drops. And thank you for the tribute that you did for the voice. I think a lot sorry, of the fans sorry, sorry. Um, are appreciative of that because yeah. sometimes you know oh. things happen, but you don't want to lose the memory of the people that we have yeah. lost. You know, so Important. keep that memory alive. And yeah, man, you know, keep Shout doing out. you. All the best, bro. Appreciate it. Shout out. Thank you for having me, guys. Yes, sir. Yeah. <coughs> oh, what 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 a fun episode. You know, that's the one thing. You see what I said about Stilo. Good to he's the one guy who's just going to tell it like it is. We got the answers today, man. So he's a brewer in hip hop and just like me who loves hip hop knows when to attack hip hop at the right times. <laughs> Say the right things because hip hop artists sometimes need to get checked. And I love Sensitive. that Stilo keeps it one hundred. Yeah. yeah, he's not here talking about people's feelings or whatever. Yeah. He's talking about his own feelings yeah. around everything that's going on. And I'm glad that he took us through that journey, man, of where he started. If you don't know, now you do. And where what his plans are for the future. Really, really dope chat. Yeah, man. Shout out to Stilo. He's one of the realest ones we still have in the game. And uh, of course, when the album does drop, we need to go out there and support him because the music is really dope. And I think, yes, as he's mentioning, sometimes people don't really give him a chance because they are worried about what other people are saying as opposed to just giving it an ear. And I've, I gave that one album an ear and I was like, yo, I really fell in love with like a different side of Stilo. So um, even this uh, conversation today, I hope that kind of gave you a little bit more insight as to the type of guy he is as well, you know? Absolutely. I think open your eyes and your ears more to what uh, Stilo is saying and putting out there. And I think you might see a different side and receive him a lot better. And I hope that's what this interview does for you. Shout outs, man. Keep on liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing, doing all of the things with this sure. YouTube video. And of course, we'll be back next week with another hot one with myself, Miss Cosmo. Shout outs to Moochie. Yes, sir. One second.